Hi, Michael. What are you doing, man? Uh, hey, man. I'm, I'm a little worried after the tone of that last lab. What are you worried about? Uh, passing the practical. The practical? Practical's easy. Why don't you follow me, man? I'll show you a few things. All right, cool. Oh, get out of the way, jerk. Oh, Come man. On, Michael. It's going to be rough. All right. Why don't I show you a few things that I think are pretty cool? Ah, oh, sweet. What are you worried about? Oh, man. I've been bored studying so much, I, I haven't even looked at any of this stuff. Anything? Well, let's talk about the cervical diagnosis real quick. So let's have our patient here. We'll go ahead and lay down. Don, I told you to take your shoes off already. We're doing this video. I'm sorry. Amateur hour. Alright, so you're going to have your patient lay down. You're going to be screening for the cervical spine C2 to C6 and C6 on C7. So, if we flex our patient, we're trying to open facets. So what we're going to do, this, these facets are already relatively open if we start flexing the patient. So we're going to basically try to maximally open the contralateral facet. So if we palpate with our left hand, we're opening the right facets. So, if I'm on C2, I don't really have to flex very much, but I'm going to be applying a force that's anteromedial. It's going to be trying to gap that right facet. Okay, so if I push there and it feels like it goes, and then I push the other direction and it feels like it goes, those two facets will open. I flex up a little bit farther to C3, do the same thing there, and then C4, C5, all the way down to the cervical spine. And if you feel there's a hard end feel, that means that the, the uh, contralateral facet is stuck closed. So we're going to call that an extended dysfunction. So if we're going to talk about flexion dysfunctions, we're going to find those in extension. Extension dysfunctions, excuse me, flexion dysfunctions, uh, are stuck open. So the facets are going to remain open and they will not close. So our force vector for these is going to be inferior and medial, down towards the opposite shoulder. So when we talked about extension dysfunctions, we had the patient flexed up and we were trying to open the contralateral facet. For flexion dysfunctions, we're trying to close the ipsilateral facet. So if I push with my left hand inferior medially, it's going to be closing the left facet. Okay? So I'm pushing on these facets, trying to close it, and I add just a little bit of extension as I get down further along the cervical spine. Again, if you find a hard end feel, that means that that side is stuck closed, or excuse me, stuck open, and it does not want to close, so we call it a flexed dysfunction. This is the cervical treatment. Stop talking. Okay, this is the treatment for an FRS right dysfunction at C4. So if the diagnosis is FRS right, muscle energy, we're going to treat this as muscle, muscle energy. Muscle energy is a direct treatment. So we place the patient into the restrictive barrier. If the diagnosis is FRS right, we place the patient into ERS left. So we find C4, we add a slight bit of extension, a little bit of side bending until we feel motion under our fingers, and then rotating to the left side. So because the diagnosis is FRS right, we place the patient into ERS left. From here, you'll tell your patient to rotate against your hand for three to five seconds with an isometric contraction and relax. They'll take up the slack, add some extension, side bending and rotation to the left, and push against my hand, relax, All right? Take up the slack and then push against my hand and relax. Take the patient with a passive stretch, then take them back to neutral and then reassess. For extended dysfunctions, we're going to place our patients into the flex position. So if our diagnosis is, <clears throat> excuse me, is ERS left, we will place the patient into FRS right. Let's say that we're working on C4 again. We're going to flex down to C4. We're going to add side bending to the right and rotation to the right until you feel movement in your fingers. From here, you'll tell your patient to straighten up with an isometric contraction, relax. You'll take up the slack, move further into the barrier again and relax, take up the slack, and push against my hand, and relax. Passive stretch, back to neutral, and then reassess. Okay, so now we gotta fiddle and diddle and uh, do the still technique. Wait, I have a question about the facets. The facets? Yeah. Michael, you know what? You obviously didn't watch my lecture. I, I can't do this, dude. If you can't even watch the lecture when I ask you to do this. Oh, man. Whoa, oh, Jeremy, Jeremy. Uh, he just he just stormed out. He got upset that... Well, did you watch the lecture? Mm, no, I was studying for boards. Didn't he ask you to watch the lecture? Yeah. Well, that's probably why he left. Hey, you man, want me to I... run you through it? Yeah, I would love that. Okay, let's do it. Yeah, he was... So... He was showing me the stool techniques. Okay. Uh, go ahead and sit up, then. Face that way for me. 
So the important thing to remember for still technique is that it's an indirect and direct technique. So the first thing that you want to do is get your diagnosis, then position the patient into the freedom, add compression, and then pull them through their restrictive barrier. So let's say that Don had T6 uh, ERS right. So I'll monitor using two fingers. I will put my arm around his shoulder, put him into E, RS right, making sure that I localize to the area. I'm going to add compression, and once I add compression, I'm going to hold it and then swing him through his barrier to FRS left. I'm going to release and then recheck. It's that easy. Wow, thanks. All right, so the last part of the practical is going to be on Chapman's points. Ah, I feel pretty good about Chapman's points. Well, that's good. Then I'm not going to palpate all 18 Chapman's points for you. So what we're going to do in the practical is the proctor will give you two Chapman's points. You need to be able to palpate where they would be on the anterior surface, and then you need to verbalize where they would be on the posterior side. So an example would be the proctor would ask, where is the Chapman's point for the ovary? You would palpate the pubic tubercle, and then you would verbalize T10 transverse process. Oh, wonderful. Thanks so much, man. I'm really prepared now. No problem. You're going to do great.